Hey everybody, my name is Wyatt Oates, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use sends so that you can properly set up your reverbs and delays. This obviously works in Pro Tools, but it's also going to work in any other DAW and on analog consoles as well. Okay, so what we have here are two tracks, an acoustic guitar and a lead vocal track, and what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a reverb the proper way. There are a couple of other ways to do it, but what I'm going to show you is technically the correct way. Okay, so here's our acoustic guitar. So you can see in Pro Tools you have 10 inserts and 10 sends, and they're going to go signal flow wise in order of the alphabet. So the first thing you want to do is go to your first send. Uh, you can really use any send, but just for keeping things straight and organized, let's use the first one. And I'm going to go all the way down to New Track. That's going to bring up my New Track menu. I'm going to want a stereo aux input for most of my time-based effects. There are some extenuating circumstances where you might want mono auxes instead, but for the most part, stereo auxes will work for virtually every type of effects return you're trying to set up. So let's call this Reverb and let's hit enter and you'll see my stereo aux here and the first thing that you want to do once your stereo aux is created before you set up a plugin or anything else on it is you want to command click the solo button what that does is it solo safes the reverb return so that if you solo one of your other tracks it doesn't cut the reverb normally if it weren't solo safed you would see the mute gray out just like the other tracks and you would not hear the reverb anymore. What you want to do is you want to be able to solo the vocal and hear the reverb with it. Okay, once we've done that, we can choose our plugin and we're going to put it on the insert of the effect return or the stereo aux return. I'm just going to use D-verb because everybody will have that one. And let's use a nice large hall. You can set your reverb uh, to your liking. I'm going to leave it at the default large hall. Uh, it sounds pretty good and for this instance I just want you to be able to see how to set the reverb up not get into all the different types of reverbs. So now that we've done that we have a send coming from the acoustic guitar track going to the input of the stereo aux that has the D verb or reverb on the insert of the track. So once we have that we can pull up the fader which is the send amount and cocktails and cigarettes. And let's solo our acoustic guitar. Okay, so a couple of things. You saw me turning the reverb send off and on, which in turn muted the send going into the reverb so you didn't hear the reverb anymore. That's different from muting the return, and I'll tell you why in a second. You can mute the send by command clicking it or by actually having the floating fader pulled up and hitting mute on the send fader. So what we have here is parallel processing. I have my dry acoustic guitar, and then we're sending a copy of it to another track that we're hearing in parallel with the dry acoustic guitar. And then we're using the send to control the amount of reverb, not the wet dry of the plugin itself. On your stereo aux returns, on your effects returns period, your wet should always be 100% by default. If you have multiple effects on your aux return, then you can get into, I want a little bit of delay after my reverb and your mix might not be 100%, but when there's just one effect on the aux return, you want your mix percentage to be 100% wet. Again, this is parallel processing because we're sending it to a track that we're hearing parallel to the original track. Okay, so before we go any further with showing you our example of using parallel processing 
and ascend to put reverb on this acoustic guitar and then on the vocals, I'll just go ahead and cover the elephant in the room in that why would we not just put that same reverb plug-in straight on the track itself. You might have seen someone do this or you might have just naturally gravitated towards doing it that way. And what you probably did was put it on the insert of the track and then messed with the mix percentage of wet dry. So this would be what's called serial processing. Serial processing is typically reserved for EQs, compressors, gates, dynamic effects, not time-based effects. And there's a couple of reasons for this. When I do it via parallel processing, I have the volume of my acoustic guitar and then I'm adding a little bit of reverb to it via sending a copy to the reverb aux. So it doesn't really change the volume of the acoustic guitar in my mix. It does add a little bit of volume because we're hearing reverb on it. And so you can adjust with your fader of the track, but it doesn't change it nearly as much as if you use serial processing to put your reverb on. That's kind of a more advanced reason not to do serial processing, but it's a good one. Because if you have a lot of tracks and you have things sitting nicely in the mix, putting on a serial processing style reverb or delay and then trying to mess with the dry wet percentage can really mess up your volume or your gain structure within the mix. Another reason would be, what do I do when I want another reverb for my vocal? Or I want some of this reverb on my vocal? I've literally got to copy the plugin and now I have two instances of the plugin. When you get 20 tracks, 30 tracks, or really even five or 10, that's a lot of different reverbs and it can bog your computer or your system down. What we would do instead, let's remove these from the inserts. When we have a good reverb on our acoustic guitar and we want to put the lead vocal in the same type of room or the same type of space, we can literally just put that same send on the lead vocal. Cocktails and cigarettes, and this is how it's done. You tell and now, just like with our acoustic guitar, this fader coming from send A, which is feeding into the input of the reverb track, now controls the amount of vocal reverb. But I have two separate reverb sends coming from the two tracks, so I can have different amounts on the two different tracks without using two different plugins. Cocktails and cigarettes, and this is how it's done. You tell me about Hollywood, and wouldn't that be so I can make my acoustic a little tighter and my vocal a little more wet and a little more spacious or vice versa, whatever you choose. Either way, it gives you the options, which also brings me back to my point of why you would not mute the reverb aux. Rather, if you wanted to hear it without reverb, you would simply bypass the send because now you're affecting only the acoustic guitar's reverb, not the lead vocal reverb. If you mute or affect in some way this reverb aux, now you're changing the reverb on both the acoustic guitar and the lead vocal. And if you have other tracks sending into the same reverb or delay, then obviously they would be affected as well. So once you set up your reverb or delay aux, you can pretty much leave it alone, other than if you wanna choose a different reverb or add some EQ to it or something like that. But for now, we're just trying to show you how to set it up correctly. So let's put our reverb at the bottom. I always put my effects returns at the end. You, some people like them at the beginning, whatever works for you. So now let's try putting some delay on the vocal. And I'll show you a slightly different way than we did before. It's a little bit longer. What I showed you before was a more simple way to send the track into a reverb or delay. Uh, I'll show you the long way just so you understand what's going on. So I'm gonna choose send B and I'm gonna choose bus one and two. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of volume. Now I'm going to shift command in and make a new track, a stereo aux track. The first thing we do is command click the solo to solo safe the aux. Let's call it delay. Let's close the send out for a second and let's make the input of the aux that same bus one and two. So now that send coming from the vocal channel is feeding into our delay aux. Next, let's add a delay plugin. I'll use the stock Pro Tools delay. And I'll choose quarter notes and give it a little bit of feedback, and let's listen. Cocktails and cigarettes, and this is how it's done. You tell me about how
Hollywood and wouldn't that be fun? And you can hear that the level of my send that's feeding the delay aux, which is going through bus one and two, is definitely controlling how much delay there is on the vocal. So I've got the reverb send. And cocktails and cigarettes, and this is how it's done. You tell me that's controlling the amount of reverb, and then I've got the delay send. And cocktails and, cocktails and, cigarettes, and cigarettes, and this is how it's done. You tell me about Holly. That's controlling the amount of delay on the vocal, and I can bypass by command clicking either one. And here, just the vocal. And cigarettes, and this is how just the vocal done. with reverb. You tell me about Hollywood. Just the vocal with delay. That be fun. Or the Don't vocal with both. It. It's, it's true. true. I wanna, I wanna get, get to know to the know real you. you. Okay, so I'll close out my send floating faders and I'll close out my delay plugin, and you can see how it's routed. So if I wanted some delay on my guitar or any other track, I could option drag, or I could go to the send and go to that same bus one and two and turn it up. And cocktails and cigarettes. And you would set up any other time-based effect that you wanted on a stereo aux similarly, or if you had multiple reverbs or delays that you wanted in a session, you would just make new aux tracks and route them either of the two ways that I showed you. One cool thing about doing it the first way is that it automatically names the bus as well and doesn't use up one of your pre-made buses that comes when you open a Pro Tools session. So had I done the delay the way that I did the reverb, it would be called delay already, which just makes it a little bit easier to tell what effect is being sent where from what tracks. So that's the proper way to set up a reverb, delay, or time-based effect on an aux. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, messages in the course. We're all ears. We'd love to hear your comments or thoughts, and we'll see you in the next video.